Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to Someone Zero Hour. Welcome back to the World Series 2021, round number one into the best of nine. And today here we have expert, well, not not expert officially level player, but we know he's um expert level player, basically the very the top, very top of the very top. Which is vivid down in the south as the uh, green China nuke. Up in the north, we have Emma Leo with the red GLA Stealth. I um, never heard of Emma Leo before, but um, build order looking quite on point. So, uh, yeah, we'll try to work out this person's level as it goes. But you're against a very hard opponent, which is vivid in round number one. So, yeah, it's a very, very difficult ask, I think. A stealth versus new, kind of balanced. I, uh, I would give the chances, uh, maybe to the nuke on this map because it's kind of easy to get the battle masters in the supply line. I think the nuke can just spam battle masters and eventually will overrun. I think you're going to need some hijackers, some nice boxing skills going on for the GLA in order to be able to win. Now, he's made a barracks and a terrorist on this side and this truck rush looks like it's going to get um, shut down, but no force fire there from Emma Leo. Actually, was he even paying attention there? That is the question. If he wasn't, where was he looking? I don't know if there's lag here or not because, yeah, that terrorist missed. Sometimes lag, things like that can happen. Truck doesn't really achieve that much. Two terrorists and a worker. So actually, that's an even trade. $600 for $600 worth of units. I think you will take that. Uh, worker down here. I um, wanted to put some pressure on this supply, but little does he know there is no supply there. Uh, just yet. Because uh, Vivid has gone for a two supply, two war factory build order, but his uh, first supply... Um, sorry, he's, he's more, his first war factory and more aggressive war factory is here on this right-hand side. So straight away, this battle master is probably going to get in. Kills a couple of RPGs. Does he back a little bit too close there? But... Ooh, that's close. And that's a, that's a big win there as well for Vivid. That technical going down, because if 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 it, that was the other way and the technical won the engagement, it would probably be a Vet 3 Super Tech, unless Vivid scrapped the night instantly, which I'm pretty sure he could have. But yeah, that battle master surviving is not exactly what you want. Another terrorist force fired on the ground there, but sadly for him, does miss the target. RPGs evac here, but even if the first Battlemaster goes down, these RPGs are uh, becoming low in numbers. And already now there's a Battlemaster in the uh, in the supply line. He's left a gap there. So yeah, that box needs to be a little bit better, I'm afraid. There is a Flamer here gunning down the tunnel, but the technical there does help. He gets himself a Vet 2. There is a Scrap Deny in there, but it's a little bit delayed, but the technical is not being controlled at all. Technical does go down. Uh, there is a sneaky supply over here. So technically, Emilio right now is on three supplies. But I think hijackers are the way forward. And as I say that, here's a hijacker. So if this RPG manages to get in this little tower, I don't know if it's going to crush this or not. It looks like you will. But then, it, um, yeah, get, get a few of these Battlemasters for yourself. Use them either defensively or aggressively here. Kill a couple of trucks. I think that could be very nice, actually. So Emilio not looking bad here at all. Um, actually looks in an okay position, but there's mines here, so the Battlemaster probably will go down to the mines. Yeah, nice play there from Vivid. Vivid is very tough, man, even when it's looking good for Emilio. His uh, Battlemaster there did get gunned down. Another Battlemaster in the supply line. This is not what you want, because them workers have probably barely paid for themselves. A thousand to replace them workers. Battlemaster here will clear up the quads, I think. Oh! That's close. Quad does go down as well, so that's worth it. One battle master, two quads. You take that, and now there's two battle masters in both of the supply lines. Oh, sorry, one in each. Probably the correct way to say it. Uh, so yeah, Emilio. Even with this sneaky supply down here, he's only on, uh, only on that one sneaky supply because all the workers on the other ones are dead now. Uh, and this one, he's even getting harassed here as well. That's why I prefer to play the nuke here. I think. Especially on this map. I think Nuke should win both ways. I think it should be 1-1. You don't have any tanks as the stealth, so you've got to rely on quads, RPGs. And the hijackers. Even though the Battlemaster went down, the workers were not pulled, so the workers all there went down as well. Uh, Emily was actually ahead in terms of XP, which is interesting, but I don't think the worker kills count for XP. So looks can be deceiving. Yeah, oh man. They're kind of frozen in time. They got hit that hard. <laughs> they just kind of froze in time. 
by a uh, nuke battle master. It's probably the last thing you want to get run over by. I mean, it only looks little in terms of the game, but in real life, you stood in front of that. Looks pretty bad. Yeah, Emilio on no workers ultimately cannot continue. I think probably you could um, forget about the arms earlier in the early game there and just spam hijackers and go for the oils, something like that. Because, um, yeah, as you saw, quads don't do very much against nuke. I mean, it can work. Big size makes it work all the time, like to... Um, which completely baffles <laughs> the expert level players when size makes that work. But generally, you're going to want at least one really aggressive tunnel and keep taking out them battle masters. You need to have really good engagements and take down the first few battle masters at least and then hijack a few. And that's the way to kind of flip it on its head. But uh, Vivid, a very, very good player. Emily, I was quite impressed then. Um, I was expecting a complete blowout there. And it, even though Vivid comfortably won, it did look uh, pretty good at, for, at times because Emily was getting the right units out. He was trying the boxing. He had three supplies. He tried some aggression down the bottom with two quads. Um, so yeah, there was elements of a decent play there for Emilio. So let's see what he can do in the reverse. Okay, jumping into reverse, we have OE Vivid up in the north with the uh, green GLA stealth. Just in case you're wondering what the OE part of his name is, just the clan that he's he's in. Excal is in the same clan. He's the leader of the clan. Um, Google's in that clan. And Logic is in that clan. And uh, Spaulding is in that clan, or was in the clan. You can only have on Clan Wars, which is where the clans are hosted, you can only have um, four members at any one time. So if, if you invite, let's say, Vivid, you've got to then kick Sp uh, Spaulding and, and, and whatever. So I think that's what's happened at the moment. They've kicked Spaulding temporarily, and they've got Vivid, Google, Logica, and Excal, I think. But yeah, they're just... Just to let you know that's the clan tag. So down in the south, we have Emilio with the, with the red China nuke going for similar build order to what Vivid did, but his supplies are in different positions. I think this is a little bit unorthodox and might catch Vivid off guard. Hence that worker there being able to get crushed by the truck. Nah, man, you don't want to do that. Oh, no, Emilio. That truck was looking so good. If he'd have been paying attention there, killed that worker and then gone straight for that worker and gone inside of there, that would have been absolutely amazing. The bit of hesitation, missing it in the first place, then going back, and then going back over here again, that truck is now, uh, dare I say, worthless, completely pointless. Yeah, you, you can't be hesitant like that in a, in a top-level game like this. Uh, terrorist is going to get in the supply line here. The trucks are going to try to move, but they're trapped. Oh, man. They are trapped. That's why sometimes it's good to leave a gap on this side. To actually build the wall factory there and leave a gap. Because then the enemy will be afraid of mines as well. And you can drop down mines on the supply. Flaming there gets gunned down. Does take out this tower though and a few RPGs. Doesn't stop that worker just yet. But it's actually on a very low HP. This truck is uh, just chilling. It's a, it's a dead truck basically. Dead truck walking. There's no way it's going to do anything. Um... It stops all the attacks so far. There's a flamer here on this right-hand side. And that technical. I don't know if it's scrapped up yet. I don't think it's scrapped. It's going to put some RPGs inside of here, though, I'm pretty sure. And then this truck will no longer be able to collect. The Battlemaster won't be able to do anything about that. You're going to need a flamer. Terrorist dropped off on the Dozer. And I think he will get some scrap from that as well, which will make this technical even stronger. There is another Dozer back here. This truck has stolen some money. I'm going to try to escape, but the tunnel is just going to take that down unless you micro it. You're going to have to go all the way back around the base, but I mean, it's pointless. It's, it's dead anyway. Oh, super tech. Is he going to get that scrap? Uh, I think he's scared of doing it. I think he thinks there might be mines there now. But yeah, he could get a super tech right here, but there is a truck about to go down. Flamer here continuing the push in the mid. And Vivid is going to be on the super tech by the looks of things. There is a hijacker out now. Takes the flamer. But it is a low HP, but there is a Flamer versus a Flamer. And yeah, the Flamer by the War Factory is the one you want. It's a super tag taking out the other Flamer. That's looking like a GG, I think. Nice try there from Emilio, mixing it up with this uh, un unorthodox placement of the supply. Unusual placement. And GG, 2-0 for Vivid. Okay, on to the next game. Game number three, we have OE Vivid in the uh, north with the green 
GLA Vanilla, and this time he is against uh, Emilio with the red super weapon general. We are on the map and Vendetta, which is also another very popular map at the moment. Uh, I think the GLA has the advantage here because uh, super weapon, as I always say, has expensive Vs. It doesn't have like the point defense lasers like the Air Force has or the cheap Chinooks that Air Force has. It doesn't have um, laser turrets or laser tanks. It doesn't have any tanks actually. Just has expensive Vs and that's it. Um, yes, you can drop down EMPs and stuff, but then you need this um, upgrade from here. Okay, so War Factory and a Barracks from Emilio. I like the build order. Um, not so sure about the War Factory placement. It probably could be here to better box this dozer in. But maybe he's got something else lined up for over here. And he just wants to get that War Factory up ASAP. He's actually dropping another Barracks here, but I think there's a gap. Meanwhile, we have the drone inside of um, Vivid's base. Nice place drone because the tunnel hasn't detected it. And that will still be scanning the GLA base for the next uh, few minutes at least. If we're just going to go and grab this uh, bunker over here. I mean, as you've seen on previous games, especially like my games against Reznov, and we've seen a few other games, where the USA is able to get the GLA arms dealer relatively easy here. Because even though you've got this tunnel here, and you've got this tunnel here, the V army can just push straight down the middle or, or just around the side or something. So GLA's going to have tunnels everywhere. As you can see here, this V is even getting in. I think you're sending out V to its death, and that's an expensive V because you built the $500 um, uh, Hellfire drone on top as well. It's killing a couple of workers. Killed two workers so far. Tech RPG kills the dozer, and the terrorists kill the power, which is slowing down the super weapon, that is for sure. And yeah, his economy and his money for the next few minutes isn't going to be that great. Not only has he been slowed down, but this, this V here also going to go down. He's only killed two workers. So that V costs $13.50 to make. And it only killed two workers, which obviously costs $400. He did delay the mining, but you would say that's not. you have to be more efficient than that. As super weapon versus GLA, you've got the weaker army. You have to be ultra efficient. You have to be doing damage and not really taking any damage back. That's, the, that's just the way it goes. Um, so Vivid creeping forward with these tunnels interestingly he's not garrisoned anything here indicating he's probably going to go for a big tech rpg push and uh, that's generally what it means he's not taking many garrisons i think he's even evac that building so watch this yeah you see all these rpgs inside of here massive tech rpg push that is probably what i should have done against Reznov if i was to win that game big check tech rpg push like that Yeah, quite early on as well. That would be the key to victory, I feel. Nice laser lock there. Takes the technical quite low. This V is empty. Just being sent pretty much to his death. RPGs here uh, for GLA, GLA are outnumbering the missile defenders of the USA. Uh, the USA at the moment, there's nothing really you can do. Send that V in. It's just going to retarget and kill the V. He is taking out one, one RPG for free. But now the V is going to get focused. Again, it's expensive. There is a ranger here, which will counter this, but there's already a forward tunnel position. There is another technical coming in, probably going to be a TNT. This aggression here from Vivid is exactly what he needs to do. Technical comes in, TNT. Supply does go down. Uh, nice laser lock and technical. Technical does go down, but... The other supply has gone down and this one is being harassed. The Chinook's taking heavy damage. RPGs. Ooh, another V goes down. Oh, man. So, so expensive for the super weapon. Meanwhile, Vivid has even expanded to a third. His economy is pretty much untouched. He lost two workers earlier and that is it. Meanwhile, all of these Vs here are getting cleared up. Well played here from Vivid. This is the exact kind of aggression you need to be doing. It's a perfect example of what you need to be doing. Meanwhile, expanding behind it. Absolutely uh, perfect here from Vivid. Um, which is why I said he's a super top player at the beginning of this set. So yeah, 3-0 for Vivid so far. Okay, this one might be interesting now because uh, it's 3-0 for Vivid and now he's got the weak army against the strong army. Super Weapon General versus GLA. Super Weapon for Vivid down in the south with the green. Up in the north, we've got Emilio with the red GLA Vanilla. 
Uh, barracks being built as the first building. It looks like a real barracks. I do like that from Emilio. He's building it forward, though. Is that indicating he's going to go for a terrorist here to stop any dozers getting the crush building a tunnel in the mid? I hope, for his sake, that he's going to do some terrorists back here as well. Or actually, maybe here. Because, uh, yeah, if it goes for a dozer drop, which sometimes uh, Super Weapon General will do, then, uh, yeah, it could slow down your build a hell of a lot. There is a worker going to the mid, and the terrorist is actually going towards the supply first. Now he's switched it. He's going over here. So that's going to be a nice coverage, to be honest, because Vivid is going for a dozer straight down the mid, and this terrorist is going to be in place. Ready to deny it. So that tunnel is probably going to get up. A little bit of hesitation there. Not sure what that was. I think it was the arms dealer. He's not sold his CC yet, so he's slowing his build down. Need to sell your CC to get the extra $1,000 cash. Seven workers there. Quite early on. Impressive. Barracks being dropped down here now. Hmm. And he's keeping his CC. Is that is that on purpose? Why has he not sold his CC? So there's no TNT going to be coming. And the tech RPG is going to be late. Hesitant with the war factory. Keeping his CC. Is he just messing around here? Oh man, this is uh, a little bit too defensive. You remember in the previous game, by like in a few minutes, he was already getting TNT, tech, RPG, those hunted power going down. Well, this time there's going to be probably none of that. A little bit too passive. You, you can't be passive like that. You capitalize, you want the stronger army. Punish him, man. Did he pick up one? How many terrorists are in there? Is it one terrorist, one worker, and two RPGs? I missed it. Wasn't paying attention fully. That technical is going to get wrecked, though, because there's two Vs here. One worker, two RPGs, one terrorist. It's just not enough. It's a little bit of a mixed bag. He's trying to get an aggressive tunnel, but Vivid, of course, is going to deny that. RPGs here is going to get crushed by the ambulance. There's so zero damage taken for Vivid. There is a terrorist still here, but one terrorist by itself cannot do anything, so... That barracks at most will get damaged. That's if this V doesn't even stop it. V stops it. So yeah, all the aggression. CC is sold very, very late. So that's definitely a mistake there for him, Emilio. Got a decent amount of workers, but that's probably the only thing going for him. He's got two tentacles now out. He needs to cause some damage now because the US the super weapon has been completely untouched. He's just been allowed to drop down these fire bases. And just the mass Vs, you cannot do that against uh, Super Weapon, I'm sorry. You just can't. RPGs here causing a little bit of harassment. But Vivid, you could probably just pull them and just go across the map with the with the Vs. I don't think it really matters. He's going to close down the arms dealer. There's no tunnels really in the way. You could just go there, close down the arms dealer, or just go on this right-hand side. Like, yes, you've boxed it or tried to box it with the barracks, but that barracks can just go down so easily. So these Vs, is it even a real one? It's a real one. I'm only going to to scramble the defense, but there's too many Vs here, too fully loaded. A uh, nice micro there from Vivid, of course. This technical here has been cleared up. Vivid is still on four Chinooks, although he doesn't seem to be collecting efficiently with them all. That one is collecting, actually. But this one here is uh, just there. Um, v does get picked up, but already the arms dealers are on top of. Technicals coming in, but three technicals against four fully loaded Vs. And an ambulance. Never really going to happen unless you've got 15 RPGs with them as well. Strategy Center being built. Arms dealer going down. That V is still repairing. I think there is a bit of a lag here. We saw a bit of a um, delayed evac there. It was kind of weird. Vivid lives in Malaysia. And I don't know where Emilio is. So I'm going to guess with Millard in there as well. Probably it's going to be a little bit laggy. Um, Emilio has been defeated. Well played to Vivid. 4-0. Okay, jumping into the next game, we're now on Snowy Drought. Up in the north, we have Vivid with the China Nuke in the green. Down in the south, we've got Emilio with the infantry, and he is playing with the red color. He's got the massively overpowered army here against, uh, against the nukes. This should be a 1-1 matchup, but that's the last thing that Emilio wants a 1-1 matchup, because even if you do win this, 
vivid super top player playing with infantry against your nuke is going to be very very hard indeed to win uh so yeah that's that would make my heart sink a little bit if this was me uh emily are going to go for two supplies one of them is a more forward supply uh, vivid has gone for a barracks and some red guard he's got the veteran c on the red guard and he's dropping down the airfield so he's going to use uh, the red guard to actually send to his oil and then this one will probably just go straight to the enemy oil he might get two oils um emilio is dropping down a bunker here not sure 100 percent like that because what if an enemy flamer comes straight across the map and just starts flame wall in here that bunker will not do anything so that bunker would probably be better a bit further forward uh, red guard is probably going to die to the mines actually yeah, it does die to the mines but as long as vivid gets one oil and starts getting the migs up so what he's going to use the migs for is uh it's a common strategy to pop open the first outpost because typically the the infantry will send an outpost straight across the map probably a full one which is pretty full it's not completely full but it's pretty full and the first two migs will just click on it and simply one shot it it's dead uh if that first outpost goes down then nuke has a very very good chance which is why you probably want to think about laming it as the infantry and go in two supplies and two war factories because if two outposts go straight down the map then the, the migs obviously will not be able to kill two they can only kill one so one of them will get through and kill the MiGs, and then it's GG. But one full outpost, yeah, that's a mistake. That's probably already GG. <laughs> probably already GG. Um, okay, so Emilio is trying to get the oil here. He does not have the capture upgrade just yet. Another outpost here, but sending a, a lone outpost by itself like that, when you just saw there's MiGs out, mm, questionable. Questionable. You do want to evac it before they come in, but uh, Vivid doesn't want to shoot an empty outpost, so he is just flying around with the mix. He can kill that outpost for free just by force firing it, even though it's gone invisible. He can just force fire it, and now these can just be uh, could just be cleared up by the mix, and then maybe just finished off by the red guard and the and the the gat, gat or whatever. He does have the capture upgrade now, does uh, Emilio. Red guard coming in. Uh, Migs are still circling. I think he might be just preparing for a helix or something. One dozer does go down there. I think that's a bit of a mistake from Vivid. He should have had that moved, I think. He's only got one more dozer left. So I think he's, he didn't use them Migs on purpose. He's keeping them for um, a helix, potential helix. Because you need, you need four to kill the helix. Tank into there gets cleared up. Uh, Vivid now capturing the middle buildings. He's also expanded here nicely. Pretty much all of the attacks here for Emilio have been cleared up. That's the first big mistake there from Vivid. Flying MiGs over the outpost and two MiGs there went down. I don't think it's going to cost him the game because he is still, I think, ahead. He's got the middle buildings. He's got decent control. He's ahead in terms of XP because he's killed a lot more. And he's got a decent amount of gats out. And these tank hunters are pretty much being sent to their death. Be lucky if they even get one kill, which they are not. Makes flying around the map. And again, a lone outpost. 
I mean, after the first three or so, <laughs> what do you expect to happen to Lone Outpost when there's MIGs out? Flamer has actually uh, killed this supply. There's a big push now with uh, Red God and Gats. All these infantry are being funneled into a uh, single file death pit where the uh, Gats are going to take him out. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any miniguns here. ECM is definitely the counter for the mix, but you just want to be careful the nuke doesn't get to nuke mix, which the nuke is on the way as I say that. Uh, this front supply is going to go down. This supply is already gone down. A flame is coming in as well. The Dave's is going over there, but he hasn't killed the flamer. Because you've got the repair bay in the middle as well. Makes come through, take out another outpost. Send the flamer back now. There's a flamer here. I think his main base is going to go down now. I think this might be Emilio's last few moments in the World Series 2021. Very nice attempt, and I think he's got potential, actually. But ultimately, he's up against a very, very hard opponent here, which is Vivid in round one. So, yeah, another 5 0 set. Um, pretty good pretty good level all around. Vivid uh, definitely won one of the favorites to uh, potentially win. I'm not saying he's the definite favorite to win the whole World Series, but definitely one of the players to watch out for, for sure, going forward in uh, future rounds. So I think he was only knocked out in 2020 by Boyker in the semifinals by a very, very close set. I think it was like a 7-6 scoreline. And even that deciding game went down to like the last few units. It was like a crazy crazy set one of the best sets i think i've ever seen actually so yeah if you haven't seen that i would definitely recommend to go back and watch that it shows you how good vivid is so uh yeah gg we'll play to vivid congratulations on your progressions around number two and uh unlucky damalio hopefully we see him back very very soon so gg